We thank you. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Isn't it awesome when you just start to talk about Jesus, how that peace and rest just descends upon you. So let's stay in that place. You can keep your eyes closed if you like. We're just going to kick off our ascension and go from here. Let's stay in that place of breathing. We breathe in the breath of Yahweh. Just see Yahweh in front of you. I want you to see the name of Yahweh. yod Hey vav Hey. And I want you to walk to the Vav that is positioned between the two Hays. And Vav is a gate. I want you to walk and you go and step into that Vav. When you are in that Vav, you've got the breath in front of you, you've got the breath behind you. And I want you to breathe in and you see the breath coming from the front into your spirit, and you breathe out and it goes behind you. When you breathe in, the, the hay behind you pushes the breath into you. So as you breathe, just see the two hays, front and back, moving in and through you as above, as you just breathe in and out the breath of Yahweh. We breathe in the breath, recalibrating our spirit and aligning our gates with the gates of Yahweh. As we're breathing in and out the breath, I want you to see yourself sandwiched in between the two haze. And the breath from all around you is moving into the center of your being. So it's like a compression chamber of the breath of Yahweh. And they are moving in and compressing into your spirit. As the breath is compressing into your spirit, your spirit man is starting to move into different spirit realms. So in other words, that compression is opening up different realms in your spirit. So I just want you to experience in any way, which there's no formula, just your spirit ascending into that breath, into different realms of the spirit.
I want you to feel your spirit starting to get lighter and you're starting to ascend. Physical realm is starting to disappear and you're becoming aware of the spirit realm is heightening your senses. Now we are still focusing on the divine realm of beauty. And as we are ascending up into the kingdom, I want you to see Jesus standing in front of you. And as Jesus is in front of you, He is inviting you into his heart. As he is standing, I want you to see the heart of Jesus in any way you'd like to picture it. And a portal opens up in his heart with a stairway for you to move up into the chamber of his heart. And you step in and you move into the heart of Yeshua. As you move in, be aware of the frequency changing, colors changing, the intensity and the frequency of the heart of Yeshua is off the charts. If you're really sensitive and you give it some time, you will feel that frequency vibrate in your body as you enter into the heart of Yeshua. So just soak up that process. And when you're in his heart, just soak up what you're experiencing there. Though it's a very intense realm, it's filled with joy. In the realm, in the inner chamber of Jesus' heart, the new wine is flowing. And I just want you to start drinking the new wine being poured out from within his heart into yours, heart to heart. You just start drinking that new wine. You're soaking up that frequency.
As you're drinking the new wine, breathing in the frequency, become aware of the love of Jesus. That beauty, compassion, that infectious love, the desire, the ecstasy, align your gates in that direction. Feel your spirit literally getting drunk from that new wine of the love that's flowing from his heart, that ecstasy that is taking over your body. Your mind, your will, your emotions are being completely infatuated, being intoxicated by that love. Okay, as you are in that inner chamber of Jesus' heart, I just want to read a scripture to you, and it's in Daniel 2, verse 27. And it says, Daniel replied, No wise man, enchanter, magician, or diviner can explain to the king the mystery he has asked about. But there is a God in heaven who reveals mysteries. Now, what Jesus is going to reveal to you today is the mystery of his first thought of you when he breathed into your nostrils the breath of life. So, in the chamber of his heart, I want you to see another portal open. 
and you step into that portal and that portal ascends you into that day of creation. And I want you to go in as you are before time and space. Jesus takes you to a special place. It can be a garden, another realm and dimension. You're going to go with him and you are going to sit and Jesus is just going to tell you. He might speak it to you, reveal it to you, impress it upon you. Might be a stirring in your spirit. So don't put it in a box how he's going to do it. But Jesus is going to reveal to you what his first thought of you was before they released you in the breath into your body. It's part of the mystic realm of the beauty that he sees in you and wants to unlock in you. Because that original thought is what he wants to open up in your spirit for you to bring back here on earth. So take some time. You're moving with Yeshua into that realm. You're going to sit with him or roll in the grass, whatever you guys are going to do. But Jesus is going to reveal that mystery to you.
I'm going to give you another two minutes. Okay, that which Jesus said to you. Now, maybe there might be some of you that did not hear anything specific or see any specific specific. There is still something there. I want you to take what Jesus said. I want you to picture it in your hands. You take it in your hands. It's like a ball, a ball of energy. Whatever it is. So I'm just going to use the word, I love you. And in that ball of energy, you see the I love you or whatever it is he spoke to you. I want you to see that energy flow in and through that ball of energy that's in your hands. The I love you. I want you to see the angels that are circling that ball of energy, that frequency of I love you. As you are holding it, I want you to breathe in. As you breathe in, see it start to seep in through your fingers, runs through your hands. It starts to go up your arms and you continue to breathe. Each motion, you see it moving up in your arms and then it starts to take over your body, your legs, your neck, your head. But each breath is a process. So go through the process as you are breathing in the energy and frequency of what Jesus spoke to you and continue to hold it in the ball. You can feel it tangibly and start to breathe it in so it goes into your complete being. Until all of that ball is empty into your spirit, man.
As you are breathing in, you start to feel whatever that original thought is, it starts to vibrate in your spirit. Now, if you think of a mine in mining diamonds, gold, they got those machines, they vibrate, the sand drops, the gold, the diamonds stay behind. I want you to see how it, it, that frequency is vibrating in your spirit. Because maybe whatever Jesus told you, you don't agree with it, as in you don't feel that way. And allow that vibration of what he released into your body is sifting anything that doesn't align up with what he said to you. And it's falling away as the pure gold and diamond of what he released into you, his first thought of you, is all that is left within your spirit. Maybe there's an insecurity that's falling away. Rejection, whatever it is. Sense that the frequency, the vibration of your spirit has completely changed. Your spirit has aligned itself to the original thought, that first thought that Jesus has of you. See your spirit glistening, it's shining, it's glittering with the gemstones of the original thought that Jesus has, or what he first thought of you before he released you. you to go to Jesus and you are hugging Jesus and that frequency is just bouncing off him his frequency bouncing off you as the two of you are reaffirming the union you have within each other
as you are hugging him, as you and him are one in union, the Eckhart. The breath of Yahweh, hey, in front of you and behind you, comes and it sandwiches you, and you start to descend into the place where you are currently. And the breath just swirls you around like a super tube as you come down. And you are positioned in this place where you are sitting now. Beautiful. So, I am, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to open up a little bit for if someone would like to share. I think it's very personal, so I don't want you to tell me what Jesus said to you, what it is that he, what his original thought was um, of you, but maybe you just want to share the experience. I know that's a little bit sketchy, but if you'd like to, I'm opening up the floor. If you want to say what he said to you, you're more than welcome. And then I just got a, a word for Lind, Lindy. So you just need to hang around. I'll share. Go for it, Jane. Hi. Oh, my goodness. There were a lot of tears on this one. <laughs> Man, this was so good. Um, yeah, so I'm trying to remember how it all started, but it was, oh gosh. Sorry. <laughs> Take your time. Okay, so um, when I first saw Jesus this time, it was like immediate tears. It was just, I could feel something big was about to happen, you know? And, um, and we went to this place. Oh, so first we went into his heart. Okay. So yeah. So his heart was just this, it just began really small, but it began opening. And the deeper I looked, the more I saw. And, and as I looked, I could feel that I was being clothed in this beautiful, like wedding gown. And it was just, just made of like, um, I don't even know. It was like made of like liquid crystals or something. And it was like sleeves and everything. And it had this huge train. And he like, as I walked through, it was, I saw this staircase. It was just this massive staircase that came up in his heart. And with, with each step, it was like another, it started with a drop of wine. I felt this drop of wine from his heart. And then another step and it was like more, you know, and it became, it was a trickle and then it just began flowing and flowing. And, and as it was flowing, I'm sorry, I hope this doesn't offend anybody, but this is what was happening. All of a sudden it was like these strings or it was like these, this unraveling in the cloth. And this was like, a just come these layers where it was at first I was like, oh, okay, here we go. <laughs> and then it was like, no. And then my spirit was coming out from within as this dress was coming off, my spirit was like sparkling. And it was like, it was like when you, when you're like playing with a sparkler, like those little sticks and the end is just like, psh, it was like that. And all of my cells and all, everything was just doing this. And, it, and then um, just coming up into this other part of his heart, it was like instantly we were transported and there was this wild, like it was like a, a, a dimension of water. And there was this water just kind of like swirling. It was like waves, but there was no like tide or anything. It was just coming around and over us and through us. And um, just feeling this like washing, this like something cleansing, purifying and refreshing. And, um, 
And then he spoke to me and I do kind of want to share what he said, just because I feel like if, if people are afraid to share or you, or just if you didn't hear anything and, and, but this is what he said to me, it was like, right. As he was like, as I was being created, he said, you are my radiant, fiery, colorful one. You have depths that are endless and you shall fear nothing. And there is nothing that could ever take my gaze from you, my firework. And it just, and that is like, it's like the opposite of how I feel most of the time. You know, I just feel like I'm, you know, I'm a mom of four young kids. I rarely leave the house for more than a grocery store trip, you know? And it's like, when we do, it's just crazy town. Like they're all young. So it's, we're in that, you know, diapers phase. And like, it just feels like I'm not really a part of anything, you know? And I'm not really shining right now. And that's okay, you know, but I am to him. You know what I mean? But then he started showing me, like he showed me at my birth when I came into the world and it was a firework and it was like the nurses were amazed my parents were like radically changed and it was like the angelic realm was all there and marveling at these like this brilliant like fire that was sparkling of this form this form of Jesus that had never entered the world and he began showing me just different parts of my life where when I thought I wasn't anything I was actually shining these fireworks these particles of firework were coming and landing on people and it was causing them to sparkle it was causing them to shine even if I didn't see it and know it at the time he was showing me like things in school like school age stuff and and all the way up to like now how my how my husband sees me and how my kids see me even though like life is generally there's a lot of tension a lot of like whining a lot of you know but it's just it's not the truth. You know what I mean? That's just, that's just a a type of reality, but the real reality is just what he was showing me today. And wow, it is completely, I'm never going to, I'm never going to forget this. You know, Um, this is going to be something I think about every day, but thank you. (laughs) Oh, wonderful. That is an amazing encounter. Thank you for sharing that, Jen. Thank you. And and, And I love getting emotional about it is because our emotions start to align with our true identity which lies in what jesus thinks of us you know so wonderful and just for the record my son is 18 and the whining has never stopped (laughs) (laughs) no (laughs) oh (laughs) um Marcia, just before I give over to you, um, Catherine, I sent you a private message. If you'll just read it. Cool. Go for it, Marcia. I think you need to unmute yourself. I know we love speaking to speaking to ourselves. I'm very good at it, man. <laughs> I speak to myself a lot. Even in the car, and then whoever's in the car will look at me and says, what are you saying now? I says, oh, I can't tell you. It's private. (laughs) It's the best sermons, or no, I don't preach. It's the best teachings I've ever heard when I speak to myself. (laughs) Okay, Marcia, go for it. I'm going to attempt to share because I'm extremely black. I couldn't... I couldn't even do the last part with a ball because I was so whacked. But um, when you talked about before you were born, you said something about seeing them blow breath into you. And that's very significant for me because I had a trauma birth. I was born with cerebral palsy. I had mouth and mouth resuscitation. And so that touched me. And then I saw before I was put on this earth and Yeshua and I were in a chair on a Ferris wheel. And we were, it was, exhilarating and exciting, but not as exciting as me sitting next to 
him holding him. And I don't know the sequence of everything that happened. I need to start recording this, why it happens. But um, I saw myself go into Yeshua and then I saw him laying on top of me and he just absorbed himself in me and he said, we are a God, we are one. And he said, you can do nothing apart from me. And um, when you were doing that last part about the ball, the word that I heard was inclusion. And that was really significant for me because all my life I wasn't included. I wasn't. And, you know, invited to be with people. And what he said to me, those first words was, you were mine, you were mine. So it's pretty special. Special indeed. Thank you. That was very personal, Marcia. I appreciate you sharing. Nikki, go for it. Hey, that was beautiful. Thank you, Marcia, for sharing. And Jen, what you said was beautiful. I had three in diapers at the same time, so I very much relate. They're all middle schoolers now, and it's like crazy, but... Um, so I, I relate so much to what you said, Jen. Um, so the Lord, whenever, um, so we were, I was swinging, he was swinging me in a field of wildflowers. It was, um, very aromatic, very beautiful. And when you said something about bringing out the wine, he brought out wine and it was a white wine, which was, I've never, he's never brought out white wine before. So I asked him why is, why is it white wine? <laughs> and so he said that this was ice vine and, um, he, and I, I told him that it's, it's hard for me to palate white wine because it's so sweet that I, I can't really, you know, I, I was, we were just having a regular conversation like I would with anyone else. And, um, he said that he was changing my palate to, um, to be able to, um, basically he's transitioning me from the season of bitterness to sweetness. And the thing with ice vine is that it goes through, um, these sub cold temperatures, like bitter, bitter cold to where then there, there, then, um, there's this very sweet aromatic, um, flavor that's released and it's it's actually meant to be like smelled and enjoyed and savored and anyway it was it was really really beautiful and so we enjoyed that and he said that he was he was changing my palate um to enjoy the fullness of the sweetness that he's bringing me into in the season so in short Wonderful. that was yeah thank you Nikki thank you for sharing that Dorit, you're on mute. Sometimes my mouse double clicks instead of single. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, this was such a wonderful, wonderful time with the Lord. And um, I'm just so grateful to be in this place. Um, I was, as I entered his heart, I've often seen it this way where I first it looks like I'm walking into some very old church building or so with, with a, a, around staircases out, made out of stone. And I've always been wondering about that, actually. It's like, Lord, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you showing me here? Um, but um, as I got up the staircase, as um, it's the whole thing changed. And I think he's kind of saying, I can change anything. I can... I can reveal myself in any place. And 
So as I was walking up the staircase, um, there was color, there was vibration, there was sound, and um, and so everything started to to come alive and move. And uh, what was just this staircase, very you know fixed, became very very flexible. And um, and that was just I could feel his heartbeat. And um, as I and then when you started speaking about the joy. I, I, I saw myself coming out of the colors and into a very bright and white, more white space. And um, I saw myself in, in a white dress and then I saw the Lord there with the wine. And he said, I have mixed some very special wines for you today. And um, he specifically gave me three words. The first one was immortal. The second one was impossible. And the third one was unattainable. And um, so, and it's just, <laughs> even as I say it now, that totally <laughs> makes me drunk again. So <laughs> <laughs> that is the best wine. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I, I think I'll, I'll leave it there. He, he spoke further about his love and how he works that in my life. Um, and how he removes obstacles. I think one thing maybe it's important to say just for to encourage anybody who has obstacles that you're like, man, I'm trying to pull this out and it's not working and it's keep coming, keeps coming back. And the Lord said, just let my love soak it and let my love take over. And those things will come out so much more easily and they, you won't even think about it anymore. And so I just want to encourage people with that, like, let his love soak you. And what was impossible is just going to be gone. Fantastic. Thank you, Dorette. Appreciate that. Cool. Bananas. I love your guys' engagement. It is so amazing. You guys make me super proud. And isn't it just awesome to go back into a place of just what Jesus thinks of you, you know? I mean, it's it sounds so simple, but people don't go there, you know? And to get that original thought of who and what he thought of you before he released you, it's just, it's epic stuff. And yes, expect to be emotional, you know, because it's surprising how we've allowed circumstances and time to affect and lies to affect our emotions and frequencies, etc. And when Jesus speaks, he starts to realign that stuff. So expect, expect a ball or two as, he's, as he ministers to you. And continue to go there because there's more, you know. And maybe you might not have heard something specific today, but you got the pathway to go and engage and maybe take more time and to just to listen as to what it is that he is releasing in and over you. And Lindy, I just felt that, you know, just when we started, I just saw you and there was like this, this glass dome over you. And I just saw a hammer come and it broke it completely. And it was like there was this realm of protection environment around you. And Jesus just came and he broke it. Because in that incubator, you've grown to a certain place of maturity. And he says, now is the time to transplant you. And he's taking you out of that place. And I just see him planting. It, it was like, you know, when you go and buy those trays of seedlings and you take the seedlings out and you plant them into the ground. And I, and I saw that kind of effect is that what he's planted in you is has matured and it's time to transplant you into a bigger environment and in that bigger environment you're going to experience a greater greater outpouring of his goodness towards you what he's going to release and provide for you and and the and the ground where he's planting you in is very fertile and i see as he's planted you as you just started watering you, you sh the roots shot out and you just started to like bullet up into the air and grow into this beautiful primordial oak tree. So it was, you were strong, the leaves that you pushed out were green 
and it just provided shade for so many others to come underneath that. So I think there's just a time of a complete transition that's busy happening. And I saw Donna posted that we are in the month of Laya, which is a month of transitioning, which is also amazing doing the course of immortality transitioning. So yes, I just saw that for you and I just wanted to release that over you. And it's pretty exciting. When God trans transitions you to the next, you start to experience a next level of abundance and provision as well so if you do experience a little bit of discomfort you know it's normal but <laughs> you're going to shoot roots very quickly <laughs> Good. then lastly before you guys duck i want to start a i need an intercessors team for trm and if you have that stirring in your spirit or you feel that you want to be part of the intercessors team for TRM, then please email me, um, info at thronerumistic.com, and just say you want to be part of the team. And I'm going to create the group. And um, I just had a stirring in the last good couple of weeks already that I need to get an intercessors team going for TRM. And, um, and I want to make it global. So it doesn't matter where you are. Um, and, and even if you are from Australia, well, we've got special grace for you. You can also be on the team. <laughs> Lisa is like smiling like. <laughs> I'm in the and UK, not Australia, thank goodness. <laughs> where are you? In the UK. I'll leave a tear, Liesl. I thought you were in Oz. Okay, okay, so that story. <laughs> okay, you you redeemed. Don't worry, you're going to heaven. <laughs> no, just a joke to the Aussies. Uh, anyway, so if you would like me to be part of that team, I love for you to be. And then next week, we'll pull it together and just put something out on the table to start engaging with, et cetera. It's not something that's going to take a lot of your time, et cetera, but I do feel the need to get a, a intercessors team going. Good. And then lastly, please pray for me. In the last while, I've really been needing some prayer and some shiftings and stuff happening. So I'd really appreciate you arcing over me and just praying in your own private time, just releasing over me. And I'd really appreciate you carrying me a bit. I need it big time. If you still want to engage and enroll with a course, you're welcome to do so. In fact, let me just put the link in for you. You can enroll. If you can't make the sessions, the recordings will be up for you to to um, engage with, and I'll say, love you guys big time. You are super amazing. This is where you say goodbye. Thank you. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Thank you, free. and blessings back to every amazing Bye. girl. Bye. 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 Bye.